Connectionism, woo, let's do it. All right, what's so great about connectionism? All right, well, first let's talk about computers. First, they're serial, not parallel. A uh, computer can read one thing at a time. Even your uh, super advanced computers, really they've got multiple processors that are like working in sync, trying to connect to each other, right? Um, so what you've got going, it, it's one step at a time, not all at once. Does the brain work that way? Seems weird. Um, computers are brittle. Uh, a computer program either works or it doesn't. But brains can break down in weird ways that are flexible and sometimes recoverable and they break down little by little and they degrade gracefully. <laughs> uh, every time I teach this, the older students in my class are like, no, they don't. <laughs> They're brittle as hell. Computers are rule-based. Um, and it seems that very few of our, the way we think about the world is, is rule-based. Very few of the processes in our minds are rule-based. So context effects, that kind of stuff, right? Like you see a triangle there. I didn't draw a triangle there. There's no triangle there at all, but you finished it in your mind somehow. It's weird. On the other hand, connection to systems can be parallel. So activation will spread throughout a network. It won't occur all at once. It won't uh, occur in a specific order. People, that are advocates of this say that it's more plausible. It's still pretty abstract, right? We we left out a lot of details of chemistry and biology. Um, there's no single part of a network that knows anything. In fact, it's that'll be an issue for the next uh, lecture. It's robust, like it's there's no part of the internet that contains all of Wikipedia. Wikipedia is spread across lots of things. You know, part of your brain contains your belief um, that sandwiches are good. There are soft constraints, not hard rules. So we learn little by little. We, we have heuristics rather than rules. In a um, classical system, the way we think about language would be something um, in the form of like uh, the goal is to learn a language. We, we are structured in such a way mentally so that we can learn a language. Um, and then we learn this particular language via a, association and exposure. But in a connection system, which is uh, less formal than that, you've got some, you've got to interpret that completely differently. It's not each, part being a specification, right? So a computer is very top down. A connection system learns what the hell it's even doing after the fact. So it knows that it's learning something. Um, the baby is paying attention to, to its parents and it doesn't know whether the word red is, whether the sound is what matters, whether the, where the parent is standing is what matters. Uh, the intonation, all of those things. They, they, can't, they know that they're supposed to be learning something. And so you're trying to learn English, let's say. So then you start learning the language. Um, and then you figure out how you learn that language. So it's completely different. It's not top down. It's, it's uh, iterative. Now you can force the connection of system to follow the, the uh, classical path, um, which will be a topic for the next lecture. Um, but, but that's not essential. Okay, that was quick and painless. We're gonna spend a lot more time on that in the next video, not this one. Let's talk about connectionism in its strong point and then we'll wrap this up. So I'm speaking to you in a language presently. You understand what I'm saying. 
you get the grammar of how my sentences are structured, even when I didn't realize how they were structured until after I finished speaking those particular sentences at the moment that I am. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I keep myself entertained. So you might think about linguistic rules in a couple of ways. One, we kind of get the rules, but we don't, we're not actively thinking about them. Or we might actively be thinking about the rules and representing them. And how you think we process language might reflect how you think we process the world. Let's think about learning the past tense. So um, a lot of our verbs can be made into past tense verbs, things that are not occurring presently or in the future, but have occurred. There are some exceptions in English to the past tense, usually we add ed or just d, but sometimes there's some really weird words that we got from some random language or another. And so the past tense of to give is gave. And that seems to suggest that um, there are, so we have certain rules and then we learn exceptions to those rules. That would be how the computer approach um, would uh, represent this. So imagine you have rule governed linguistic behavior, you learn the rules and then you learn exceptions. Cool. That is one model. Um, and in fact, when you start uh, putting this in bigger and bigger networks and imagining them not as hard rules, but um, you, you first you make the hard rule assumption and then you make the corrections to those, you can imagine a much more complicated system. And when you, you can run models on this, right? Get a computer to learn English based on uh, detecting phonemes, comparing words across phonemes, and then training it um, on words that occur most often. And what you see is that the computer gets really, 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 really good very quickly at learning regular verbs. And in fact, it gets pretty good very quickly at learning irregular verbs. But then there's this big characteristic dip where it starts to realize that there is a, a, a pattern that is repeated in certain words and not in others, right? So first it's learning um, individual instances and then it starts making a pattern and then it realizes that certain words are just not, um, the way the, the rest of them are. And so it starts associating a pattern and it realizes that irregular verbs um, don't fit and over time it starts getting better at those as well. So overfitting to a particular pattern. Um, when you do actual empirical studies with children, you find that they make this mistake. They overcorrect, they add ed to every verb. And then they start changing their performance. So one of the things that's fascinating about connection to systems is that um, when we've tried to train them on like this, this hardest problem of all language, it's one of the hard problems that motivated us in the 20th century. Um, it seemed to fit the data of how children learn language really, really well, which made people think that there was something really true about connection to systems. Um, okay, so we'll, we'll debate this in more detail in the next lecture.